Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak and welcome to our showroom in Gravenhurst, Ontario. Check out all the beautiful boats throughout this building. Could you imagine having a barn full of boats like this to play with? Well, you could come work with us at Swift. We're always looking for people that love paddling. But let's show you what we're gonna have new for this year. So we've got some really cool stuff happening. We've got a brand new Prospector 13 we're gonna go over in detail with you. We've got this really cool new forged carbon finish and look at this blue right here. We've got a variety of colors we're gonna show you. Then we've got another new solo canoe called the Flash Fire, which is the little sister to the wildfire. And we've got a really cool section of selection of combi canoes we're gonna show you. Then look over here, our, our tandem canoes, including a Canada Package Prospector 16. Got some beautiful more boats right here, including a Zylon Cruiser 16.8, which is actually my canoe, guys. And then over this way, Badger canoe paddles that Mike Ramsey makes right in house for us. Here are some beautiful pack boats that we're going to be referring to today. And then folks, come check this out. Look at the new finishes we're doing on our kayaks. With carbon bottoms, granite bottoms, the new amber cloth finish on our Kevlar Fusion boats. And the Saranac 14 LC is another brand new kayak model. And over here, we've got these beautiful amber deck and hull and basalta negra deck and hull Adirondacks. Ooh la la, folks. You're gonna need more than one new boat this year. We've got a really cool company. We've really got a good vibe going on right now. We have many long-term employees. Our general manager, Mike Ramsey, has been with us over 20 years. Carmen, our marketing manager, is almost at 20 years. And folks, we got a really good start at Algonquin Outfitters, where we really were able to test the durability of all our laminates in a rental operation. So stay tuned. We're going to show you some really cool new technology, and we're going to be swinging the mallet today. We also have a great team of people at our factory. And folks, we've done something really cool this year, and this is Matt Steffler, and he is one of the big reasons why all this is happening. Matt, I'm gonna embarrass you first. <laughs> Tell everyone where you met your wife. Uh, I met my wife at uh, the Swift Canoe and Kayak Factory my, my first year there. She was one of the head laminators, and uh, yeah, we just, uh, we really hit it off, and we've been together uh, ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Now tell us your background. Uh, so my background, when I was younger, I went to school for uh, manufacturing technology. And then a few years ago, I went back to school to take uh, three-dimensional design so that uh, we could integrate some a uh, little more computer technology into our design process. And uh, yeah, I just love composites. I have a personal shop at home where I make ATV, car parts, boat parts, whatever anybody wants. And uh, yeah, I just love composites, especially carbon fiber. So yeah. you work in composites all day at Swift, and then yeah. you go home. Yeah, and then and then if I've if I've got the energy, then uh, I go and I start working on my own uh, personal projects. Because uh, yeah, there's always things you know we do a lot at Swift, but there's uh, there's always things you just want to try and and keep keep pushing forward, right? And yeah. what's great, folks, about Matt is that he keeps pushing the envelope. And uh, we have a good customer, Troy Payne, in Minnesota. He responded to one of the forged carbon posts we just came out with. And he posted that Swift is the most forward-thinking canoe company in the industry right now. And Troy, I definitely agree with you. And Matt is a big reason why this is all yeah. happening. <laughs> So we got a bunch of dealer questions. We sent them out ahead of time, folks, that we're going to address here. And I'm going to start with one right now. Darren from Rutabaga wants me to address all the current customers that own Swift boats right now. And what I want to say to all of you is you own incredible boats. I have two of them myself. 
I have a Kuwaitan 17 in Kevlar Fusion that I love and I'm keeping forever. I've got a Cruiser 16.8 in Xylon that we're going to show you later that I love that I'm going to keep forever. We just happened to develop this new technology and our boats moving forward are going to be super cool. We've had a really big leap. So before we get into this, Matt, Melissa from Collinsville Canoe has a great question she sent in that she wants to know about our current epoxy vinyl ester hybrid resin to talk just to address all the people that currently own those. Yep. And we're going to continue building with it. It's still going to be our standard resin. Yeah, we, uh, we love our vinyl ester resin that we've been using for years. It's a, a vinyl ester epoxy hybrid. So we're getting incredible strength, far superior to any polyester resin. But we're getting some flexibility to our laminates, which is very important for some of our laminate schedules. And like Bill said, we've just developed some incredible technology this year that's going to advance our boats into the future. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's get into it, folks. So perhaps the biggest innovation that we're excited about this year is a new surface coating called UV Shield that Matt has worked with the company, their chemists, and we've come up with this incredible things. And Matt, why don't you tell the folks first about surface coats? Yep, so uh, for our manufacturing process at Swift, it's extremely important for us to have an in-mold coating. Uh, we pride ourselves in the finish that we get out of mold. So at the start of our process, we would spray the clear coat right onto the mold surface. And then a lot of people don't realize is the finish that you're seeing, the color that we're getting is actually from the material itself. It's not in the coating. So in our process, over the years, gel coat has not really changed much. In order for it to work properly and cure properly in mold, it actually has to be sprayed quite thick in order for it to perform properly. So this was a big reason why we uh, worked with uh, the company that develops UV Shield so that we could spray the thinnest amount of coating in mold to save weight, give better flexibility, better impact resistance, and uh, as a result, we're getting much more durable, much lighter, much lighter canoes. Yeah. Matt, one thing that I'm, that since you've introduced this to us, that I'm blown away with, is the boats are shining more. Gel coat clear yeah. and UV shield clear, they're completely different materials. We're getting a much brighter sheen with the UV shield, like the actual chemical composition of UV yeah. shield, it's an incredible material. Yeah, so like I was saying before, traditionally gel coat really hasn't changed that much. So UV shields are a real game changer. Almost every aspect of this coating is superior to a traditional gel coat. So you're getting more gloss, you're getting better impact resistance. Uh, it still has the repairability that gel coat has. So we feel like we've hit a real home run with the UV shield. Not to mention the actual UV protection is super important on our boats with these clear finishes. And uh, you know, the sun is you know, exposed to the material itself. So UV protection is extremely important to us. Now, yeah. no material coating is going to give 100% UV protection, yep. but the UV shield is a really enhanced form of it. Exactly. You know, like uh, even on cars and anything, the sun is a, a powerful thing. So uh, anything we can do to uh, deter it and help it from degrading our laminates over time it was, is a home run for us. Yeah. So Matt was, has been explaining to us over the years that the gel coat is typically about 15 to 20 mils thick. And now the UV shield, we're getting down to five, six, seven mils in thickness. So it's a t really taking, you mentioned taking weight out of the boats. Our bigger tandem canoes, we're finding it's taking three to four pounds out. Many of our solos and our smaller tandems, a couple pounds and Matt, customers want light. This is unbelievable. Yeah, it's awesome. And not just light, the, the, the fact that because it's thinner, the, the flexibility is what's actually really amazing me. So do you want me to swing the mallet? Have at her. Matt <laughs> made a whole bunch of beautiful laminate samples. So this is our emerald green Kevlar Fusion finish. This is really flexible. It's got great elasticity to it. So you hear there's no cracking or crunching noises. We have a beautiful piece of Canadian shield granite that we brought with us today. We've got a nice mallet here, folks. So let me show you this. This is 
blowing us away. And folks, this is a far greater impact that you'll get when you actually hit a rock because the canoes have absorption. So they take a lot of the energy. So we've been hitting our hitting these laminates for quite a while and look at that finish. It's just unbelievable. Now let's go on a quick trip, folks. This is another piece of Canadian shield and look at the sharp edges on this baby. So let's, let's go on a good trip. We're gonna run over a lot of rocks. We're gonna hit a lot of things on this baby. It's been a good trip. <laughs> so we're gonna wipe this off. I'm gonna spray a little protectant 303 on it. And then I'm gonna wipe it in and ooh la la folks. You can still see the scratches and you can see there's a couple deep ones here. But look, it brings the color in the shine and at a distance, it's just amazing. So Darren from Rutabaga had another good question, Matt. He's wondering how long will this, will, will the Protectant 303 keep the luster like this? Um, it, sh it should keep it for at least, well, one trip, you know, I, it's not a bad idea every trip to clean your boat when you get home. And while you're cleaning it, you can give her a quick rub down with the, uh, the uh, Aerospace 303. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you're going in water, so there's a chance it could rinse some of that off. So I think it'd be a good idea to uh, once a trip to uh, put an application on there just to give your boat the best protection possible. Yes. So here's a couple sheets, folks, that we did a week and two weeks ago. We scratched these like crazy. We put the Protectant 303 on and we haven't touched them since. And you still, they still look incredible. Is your boat gonna look magically brand new forever? Absolutely not. Our boats are made to be used. The resin we're using has good elongation properties. It's designed to flex and so on. But what we're really good at now is we're building really lightweight boats that are super strong. There's other folks that have been doing the mallet test on their canoes on a much, much heavier laminates. These are very thin, lightweight laminates that are absolutely blowing us away. So to summarize this, Matt, Ethan from Rutabaga wants to know, why are we using UV Shield now? So like I said, uh, the, one of the biggest ones is weight. And it's also going to help a lot with cracking in your hull. So th those are two of the biggest reasons. You know, like I said, traditionally gel coat has not changed much. And uh, an in-mold coating has to be used in our process. And for our process and for our customers, this is giving us the best possible canoe that we can give you. Now, John from Collinsville Canoe and Kayak has a good question. We've, we've been talking internally about repairability of the UV shield. Yep. So if John has a customer that gets a canoe damaged, how is he going to repair the UV shield? So the real cool thing about UV shield is uh, it's actually quite compatible with traditional gel coat. So uh, for the typical customer that's uh, f already familiar with gel coat repairs, they're going to be able to go ahead and do the same type of repair. It is a little bit thinner, so it could be a little bit ch more challenging on the repair. But other than that, repairability is going to be just awesome with the UV shield. Yeah. Now, with the UV shield, with our current epoxy vinyl luster, our standard builds, we're going to be doing the champagne color also. So you can get a two-tone finish yeah. with UV protection. We work with the company and they custom made yeah. a material for us. If someone gets a gel coat color, mm -hmm. Matt, if they say, you know, I really want a yellow or lime green bottom, Yep. What are we going to do? So, I, again, it's a real benefit to UV Shield is its compatibility with other coatings and resins. So uh, we're going to be able to give you that traditional color gel coat if you would like it. It's going to be a little heavier than the UV Shield, but we can definitely give you the look that you're looking for with the new UV Shield coating. So the mm. two materials work great together. Ab so. Absolutely amazing. It's quite. Uh, it's been quite surprising doing all the testing that we've been doing over the past few months and uh, it, it's a real great coating for us to work with. So this is I had to explain to one customer so folks really understand. So let's say we do a granite boat clear on the top and it's got a lime green bottom. We don't spray the UV shield on the whole boat. It would add too much weight. 
We just spray the UV shield on the top and then you have the lime green sprayed on the bottom of the gel coat. Yeah, exactly. That way we can keep the weight down and we're not building up too much thickness. Too much thickness can create brittleness, which can cause cracking in the future. Yeah. So let's show the folks about built that way. Check this baby out. This is a Cruiser 158 in carbon fusion with the granite upper part that we've sprayed with UV shield and it has the lime green bottom on it. And look at the shine on this baby, guys. It's got even more of a sheen to it than conventional gel coat has. A customer, Hans Winkler, ordered a boat just like this and from Collinsville. And I saw the boat in the factory and I was like, we have got to show this to folks. It's absolutely just a beautiful finish. So guys, if you really like the idea of having a color on the bottom, yellow, apple green, lime green, one of our beautiful blue colors, you can still do it. It's gonna have UV shield on the upper part with the clear coat. The bottom's gonna have the gel coat finish. Folks, we have an Expedition Kevlar laminate sample here that has the beauty ruby cloth on the outside with UV shield. And this has our champagne finish UV shield on the bottom. It's got the beautiful basalt and negra commingle on it. It's got layers of Kevlar airmed fabric inside. And Matt, I think you should do the honors on this one. Let's give this baby a little work over with the mallet. Sounds good. Let's give her. And then uh, we'll give her a little scratch here on our, on our trip. So we've got the clear. We'll show uh, what the scratches look like in the champagne here. And how about if you do a real deep dig with this? Actually, let's clean it first. Let's, yeah. That's a good idea. We'll clean it off first. We'll spray the 303 on it. I often wondered, Matt, if it's, is it hard for you when you see the beautiful boats you've built or products scratched up? I mean, it's the nature of the beast, right? We, we know that uh, it's sort of what's going to happen. So uh, we, we've learned to live with it. So Now, why don't you take one of the real sharp edges on there and really give the champagne a good work in. All right, let's give her. This is a, a deadly rock we've encountered. OK, so folks, look at that. So he's, he's scratched it right through the UV shield, right down to the bottom. And this, this is the point that we wanted to make is that you folks that often would get the UV shield because they really want to hide the scratches may want to consider getting an all clear coat finish now unless they really, uh, it's important for them to get the look of the two-tone finish. And that was Jason from Adirondack Lakes and Trails question is, Folks often get the two-tone to hide the scratches. Will this still be the case with boats made out of UV shield? I think it's going to be 50-50. Yeah, I think just like you said, it's going to be personal preference a lot, right? It depends on uh, what you want to see and what, you know, when your boat gets scratched up on if that uh, hurts you or not. Personally, me on my boat, when I damage it, I have a clear boat and I actually repair it with red gel. I like to show my battle scars on my canoe. Character <laughs> yeah. we often call them here. Okay, here's another good question from Dan from Paddle Portage in Australia. Matt, why are the scratches on the UV shield? Why are we able to wipe, put the protectant 303 on them? What, what is it about the chemical composition of UV shield? Um, so the aerospace is just, uh, it's basically, think of it as like putting a little bit of a coat of wax over the scratch. It's basically sealing off the scratch a bit, so it's making it less apparent on your boat. And it should actually help seal up the cloth a little bit if you were to wear down to the cloth and help protect it until you could potentially repair it. Okay, and Melissa from Collinsville had a good question. Since UV shield is thinner than gel coat, Will I scratch through the surface easier than your gel coat finish boats? So I was actually thinking about this earlier. So the UV shield is a little bit harder than gel coat. It has better abrasion res resistance. So what we're thinking is with the extra hardness and better abrasion resistance, it, uh, it should be about the same as your gel coat, but keep in mind, it is a little bit thinner. So if you're continually wearing and wearing and wearing, it's gonna be like sanding the finish. Eventually you're gonna hit the material. 
Awesome. Well, Matt, we've shown them the UV shield. Let's move in now to the epoxy. Mm, sounds good. Matt, the UV shield is unbelievable. The, the surface coating, our boats are all on a diet. This new epoxy resin that you've brought to the company is ridiculous. So I want you to tell the folks first about the epoxy you're building with now. Yeah. And then we'll do some tests. Awesome, sounds good. So uh, yeah, this uh, the epoxy that we're using has just been blowing us uh, away. I mean, we already use an incredibly strong resin, but now we found an even stronger, more durable one. So the, the flexibility that we're getting from this epoxy is absolutely amazing. The impact and abrasion resistance that we're getting from this epoxy is also yeah. absolutely amazing. <laughs> so. Uh, the epoxy that we're using is actually aerospace grade epoxy. So we're not cheaping out. We're using some of the best resin in the industry. We feel like if this resin is good enough for uh, an aircraft, which sees some of the most crazy swings in temperature and different conditions, then it's going to be more than good enough for a canoe, which isn't going to see the same environmental effects that an airplane would. So Matt, <laughs> one of the things that you've done with this company, folks, and this is so cool. This summer, you built a small oven yep. in the factory, and you see these little mini canoe models here. Matt has been playing with many different finishes, different construction methods. We've been doing strength tests and different laminates and so yep. on. You're also building small parts with it. And what I love about this epoxy resin that you've brought to us is you've got a really cool way of heating this up. So talk about how you go through the initial cure on the epoxy and yep. then what you do afterwards. Yep. So typically in our, in our process, we would infuse the canoe and then we would let the epoxy set up on its own naturally. Once we're at that point, We've developed a way to turn our molds into their own self-contained ovens. They're actually controlled by PID controllers. Uh, we can dial in the temperature of one of these canoes into within one degree of our target temperature. Uh, we're making sure that these boats are completely post-cured before they go out to our customers. That way, uh, epoxy has much, much less shrink than like vinyl ester resin does. So by us post curing them, we're making sure when the boat leaves our factory, it's at maximum strength and completely stabilized. So you're getting a canoe that's uh, just ready to go and uh, ready to have fun. And they look incredible. So let's do this now. Let's do something sacrilegious, <laughs> Matt. Let's take another piece of Canadian shield <laughs> and let's give it the, the let's give it the scratch let's test. Give her the old let's scratch test. Let's go on another test. good good trip. All right, so we're going on another on another trip. So again, this is UV shield as the surface coating, and then the epoxy is the resin system that is adhering the cloth, the UV yep. shield all together. So look at that, folks. That's a real good trip. So let's wipe this clean a little bit, and just like we did with our standard epoxy vinyl ester resin. We can wipe the UV shield on it. Look at that, beautiful. Now, Matt, is this gonna be hard for you to watch? <laughs> I heard from someone else in the factory when he was watching the video, Terry told me he was cringing. Yeah, yeah, quite of us uh, cringed the first time we seen you uh, take a mallet to uh, one of our boats, but hey, it's, uh, it's taking it and it's holding up, so now we're all a little more comfortable with it. <laughs> okay, so this is a Kevlar Fusion Amber Prospector 14 UV shield, look at the shine on it, folks. Can you really show that, Joe? Like, it's got an incredible surface finish to it. UV protection, lighter, stronger. This boat with the epoxy resin and the UV shield came in at 27 and a half pounds with the multi-height pods and the carbon foot bar. It's three and a half pounds under the weight in our price list. And so folks, a, a word about the price list. April 1st, we're gonna reload them with all the current weights we're building. We wanna build with the UV shield for a couple months before we have the actual, get the correct weights for all the boats. So if this is before April 1st and you're looking at one of our boats, 
contact us, we can let you know what the actual weight of the boat's going to be because it's going to be lighter than what we're advertising. So, Matt, let's do the test. Let's see if uh, anyone else is going to cringe at all. So, folks, 27 and a half pound boat. We've already done this four times to it, Joe, and if you can show people, there are little dimples down the boat, if, if folks can see it at all. It's, it's actually the core being pressed a little bit, but the actual resin, the cloth, is not deteriorating. So let's do it, folks. Are you ready, Matt? I'm ready. Okay with this? <laughs> So we're going to duplicate hitting some hard rocks. Look at that. So folks, the actual surface finish, the UV shield, is not deteriorating. The resin is not deteriorating. The cloth isn't. The core is compressing a little bit. Yeah. We can also do this, just so we can be clear with folks. We can take the mallet to our standard builds with the UV shield also with our current epoxy vinyl ester hybrid. But this new epoxy resin mat's over the top. And you've got some really cool tests that we're going to show some people. So why don't we go over to the force cage and we'll show them. Sounds good. So folks, if you want a super strong boat, if you're a heavy duty tripper, if you really like to use your boat hard, this epoxy is gonna be for you. If you're a customer also that just loves having the absolute latest of composite technology, this is gonna be for you also. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick test with our vinyl ester laminate, and this one's an epoxy laminate. They both have UV shield on it. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we've created a little pressure point in our force gauge here. We're actually going to put the finish of our sample on that pressure point. And then now we're going to apply 500 pounds of pressure. And this is our Kevlar fusion laminate, Matt. Yep. And this one is the standard, our standard build. Yep. So there we go. We've applied 550 pounds of force and we can see we've, we've slightly cracked the coating a little bit and we've stressed the laminate just a little bit. So now we're going to do the same test on our epoxy. So guys, 500 pounds on a little small object like that is a huge impact. That This is gigantic. So there we go. We've got another 550 pounds now on our epoxy laminate. And we can see that we have barely even left a, a mark of the screw on top of there. So we're seeing some significant uh, impact resistance and uh, with the epoxy, it's quite incredible. So the epoxy can take way, way more of a beating. Do we wanna show this test? Yeah, we can show that one too, yeah. It's a little bit different. Okay, so this one here, so we've actually got the resin here in its raw form, so there's no, uh, there's no smoke and mirrors here. So Matt, a couple other questions while you're setting this up, let me, let me hit you with right now. Sounds good. So Jeremy Vore, is ordering a Cruiser 16.8 from us. And he and his wife, Cassandra, run Red Leaf Designs. They make incredible spray covers, boat covers, splash decks. If you folks are in the market for anything like that, Google Red Leaf Designs covers, and you won't believe the stuff that they have. So he's been paddling a long time, and he's built some boats himself. And his concern with the epoxy was ambient blushing. Yep. So do you want to talk about that and why our epoxy is not going to be, that's not going to be an issue? Yep. So there's a, there's a couple of reasons that can cause uh, the blushing on epoxy boats. So in the manufacturing process, if there was too much moisture con, uh, content in the environment when it was manufactured, it can actually promote that blushing. At Swift, we control humidity and temperature extremely well we like to keep it in a very specific range so that all our boats are consistent and uh, yeah having the UV shield on the outer surface of your boat is going to prevent the moisture from getting to the epoxy which is going to prevent the blushing traditionally a coating wouldn't be used with epoxy in an in-mold process whereas we have a coating that we can use in mold and is sealing off the outside of your canoe from that moisture that could get at the epoxy
Okay, let's show you, let's show the folks this test, and then we got some other excellent questions about the epoxy coming up too, folks. Right on, so we were talking earlier, so this sample here is our vinyl ester resin. It's just the resin in its raw form. So we talked earlier about how our vinyl ester has lots of flexibility. So if we watch here, you can actually see, I can, I can flex that resin and it's not actually snapping, okay? So that's a, a great benefit to the vinyl ester resin. And now, now prepare yourself, Bill, in case uh, sometimes these shatter. So you'll see uh, the epoxy has much, much less flex. So I'm putting like 120 pounds on it there and there's really very, little so we're getting a lot more rigidity and uh in the testing we've been doing like these resin samples bill like you can barely even scratch the epoxy resin itself so the abrasion resistance is much much better and and matt so people really clearly understand well, there's a a term composites and mm -hmm. composites is a combination so for us it's the uv shield the resin and the cloth yep the cloth adds so much to the strength of the resin system and the UV shield. It's the combination of ev everything. Yeah, like like Bill said, with it, without the cloth, the, the resin, once it gets to its breaking point, it's just broken, that's it. Whereas when we have things like Kevlar that has incredible cut and abrasion resistance, you could actually destroy the resin matrix within that laminate and the laminate could still hold together and you could continue paddling your boat. Whereas if it were just resin, then uh, it would break and then your boat would just be broken forever, so. So Matt, let's talk about UV protection. A lot of folks, a lot of the dealers, other people wanna know, people hear about epoxy deteriorating with UV light under the sunlight. And a lot of it's because people don't put a surface coating on. Mm -hmm. The UV shield helps so much. So you did some accelerated testing. Let's show the folks. Yep. So to get started, we've, we've done some testing. So this should replicate about six months of direct sunlight. So if we look in one of them, we actually applied two pieces of tape before we put these under UV lights. So you can see this has our UV shield and this is our traditional gel coat. And you can see in the traditional gel coat that that line where we covered up the material with tape is quite apparent. And our UV shield, it is quite reduced. You you actually really have to look hard to see it. So we're super excited about this as, as Kevlar can be a UV uh, unstable material sometimes, but with our UV shield, it's gonna be totally protected. And uh, this aerospace coating that we're, uh, we're using on here is just absolutely incredible. Matt, there's a lot of companies in the industry, in the canoe industry, that are building lightweight canoes and they're not putting any surface coating on. Yep. And it's just, you see the boats like two, three, four years down, you actually see, you see a lot of fading, but you almost see little pit holes in the cloth and so on. So the sun's really eating away at it. Yeah, the, the sun is, uh, is, is everyone's enemy really. You know, like as humans, we need sunscreen. Uh, our boats need Aerospace 303 and UV shield to help protect them. So uh, we're just doing everything we can to extend the protection that you're getting from the sun. Yeah. Okay, now here's a good question, and this is from John at Collinsville, and we know who's doing all the repair testing there now, yeah. <laughs> all the repair work for customers. John wants to know if he's going to be repairing, if someone does something traumatic to an epoxy boat we built, how is he going to repair it? So like I was saying before, the, uh, the repair procedure should be pretty traditional to uh, gel coat. Just uh, you actually can use gel coat. So other than the coating being a little thinner, you know, you're going to want to braid the surface to get your coating to stick to it. And uh, yeah, procedures are going to stay pretty well the same. It's just going to be a little thinner to work with. That's all. So off the shelf epoxies will work fine on it. Oh yeah. So uh, the best thing to do is, so uh, if, if you're repairing an epoxy laminate, it's best to repair it with epoxy. You're gonna get the best adhesion and then vice versa, vinyl ester should be repaired with vinyl ester or vinyl ester can actually be repaired with epoxy really well. So you usually just, if you're fixing the epoxy, you don't wanna go to the other resins, you wanna use the same, but epoxy is compatible with all the other resin systems. Yeah. Okay, now here's another good question. Rich from Lakes and Trails Outfitters in Saranac Lake. The Adirondacks have a similar topography to Algonquin Park. Will the Swift epoxy boats be good for a bit of river running? Mm -hmm. And let me answer that 
first. So we have a really cool whitewater model called the Des Moines, which isn't on our websites. And we build them for camps and certain people know about it. We're going to build a couple boats this year with a heavy duty expedition laminate. And we are going to use them and use them hard. If you're going to ask us right now, I think this epoxy resin with our expedition Kevlar laminate is as strong or stronger than any other composite laminates in the market right now. But I don't want you to, we haven't tested it. I don't want you to run out there and think, oh, we can take these boats down whitewater for sure. We're going to test it for half a year and we're going to get back to you. So what the message I think people really need right now is if you're looking for a lightweight boat for tripping, little bit of river running, our lightweight laminates are going to be unbelievable. And what I know from seeing these boats built and the testing that Matt's doing, I can tell you, any boat that I'm going to get from now on that you guys are going to build is going to be epoxy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Sue from Collinsville Canoe has a question. Yep. And we've answered a lot of it, but why should a customer pay for the upgrade for epoxy resin? So I think uh, the, the extra durability and abrasion resistance, and uh, it's gonna make your boat a lot more rigid than a, the vinyl ester. So if those are all things that you would like in your canoe, I think it's a worthwhile investment to invest in the, the resin upgrade. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I believe, yeah. I'm a believer. <laughs> all right, Swift Epoxy, cheers. Folks, we're going to go over our trim systems a little bit. And this is our standard aluminum trim finish for 2024. It's actually a two-piece gunnel where the rivets are all put in the inside. These are the nice curved cherry seats that we use in the boat. They give you lots of comfort. We rivet them in the sides with heavy-duty rivet system. Right where a rib system goes across, there's incredible structural integrity on it. Very little wobble. This is the cherry yoke that comes standard in the canoe and we put metal backing brackets behind all of our yokes. We found over time in our rental fleet. This canoe is a really cool boat for us guys. This is the first epoxy boat we've built and we actually built this for Killarney Outfitters. It's got the UV shield on the outside. It's the Kevlar Fusion laminate. And they get 40 to 80 boats a year from us. And they really want to get boats that are more and more durable. And we took this boat up there. We showed them the testing we've been doing and they're blown away with it. And they are looking to get all their boats made in the future with UV shield and epoxy. So a lot of rental places will get our aluminum trim finish. Some consumers will get it that uh, just want to get a particular type of looking boat. Most of our customers get our carbon Kevlar trim finish canoes, so let's show you one of those. Folks, this is one of our beautiful carbon Kevlar trim finish boat. This is a granite Kiwaden 16 in carbon fusion. And this has the black and gold sock material on it. And we also can do it with an all black, we refer to it as sock, it's the gunnel. It's got a real heavy duty finish to it. And Matt, why don't you tell the folks a little bit how we do it? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So uh, here's a profile that we've actually cut off of one of our canoes. So you can kind of see uh, the inner workings of our trim. So if we look at it here, we can see the foam inside. So we use a carbon Kevlar sock that gets wrapped around the foam. After we put the surface coating on, then these, uh, the trim will basically be put right on the side of the mold. That way we can lay up all of our material up the side of the CKT. And then when the boat's infused, it'll actually come out as one piece fused with the canoe, making it one integral piece. And what's always blown me away about the, the carbon Kevlar trim is all the testing we've done is uh, our CKTs are actually twice as strong as the aluminum trim. Yeah. You know what? I love being at the factory when the molds are opened up and you pull the boats out. Yeah. It's so cool seeing the boats come out with the gunnels on them. It, it's super 
what we do at the factory is extremely satisfying. Like one of my favorite things to do there is, is taking parts out of the mold because you get to see the work that you did the day before and you, you get to see the amazing product that you made, right? And especially like boats like the cruisers that have the gunnels going in different direction, the S gunnels on them, when you pull them out, it's like, wow, yeah. holy smoke. It's really cool, especially, you know, we've got two piece molds, single piece molds. So uh, we, we have a lot of molds at the Swift factory. <laughs> so, and you know what's neat about this, guys, is that there's other companies that are doing carbon Kevlar trim or a form of carbon and foam, is that because we do this in mold and the hull is attached to the gunnel in the mold, it's pulled out as one structural part, we don't have to put a secondary bonding adhesive to hold the gunnels and the hulls together. It's structurally one part which is from a composite te technological standpoint, it's yeah. the absolute best way to build the product. Yeah, it, it's amazing. In our repair department, uh, one of the fewest repairs we do are actually structural repairs to the CKT. They hold up absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's interesting because so many people think that, oh boy, I don't want to get that I may damage it. Yeah, no, it is strong. <laughs> so John from Collinsville will want to know, Matt. Yeah. How do you repair? Let's say someone damaged, it's fallen off the car on the highway or something. Yep. How does someone fix carbon Kevlar trim? Yep. So it actually can be fixed. So uh, if you were to strain it to the point where the material is actually damaged and the resin is damaged, what we typically do is uh, we would actually cut out that layer of material and we would replace it with the same material that we put in. And we would extend it past the damage a little bit and we'd finish it with some coating. And you might see a little bit of a bump where we did the repair, but it'll look good. It'll be structural again and it'll, you're good to go. I've seen a couple of the carbon Kevlar trim repairs that you guys have done and you can barely even tell yep. where it was damaged. Yeah, we have a really good repair department. So uh, they're very skilled and they try and bring your boat back to the factory condition as best they possibly can. So Matt, let's show themselves something else cool for 2024. Sounds good. Ha <laughs> ha! Folks, how about this? Prospector 15, carbon fusion, granite fish finish, carbon tech parts. This beauty only weighs 29.8 pounds. It's sub 30 pounds. Don't take my word for how light it is. Joe, let's show them the footage of Diane flipping the boat up. So let's go over this, Joe. This is our carbon Kevlar trim finish with a carbon tech package. So this granite Prospector 15 has the black carbon Kevlar trims. It's got the black end caps, black handles, all carbon. It's got these incredible new carbon seats that Matt's gonna tell you all about. And the Prospector 15 has the Versa seat where you can solo it or sit forward and you can kneel comfortably. It's an incredible seating system that's coming standard in the Prospector 15s this year. This has the beautiful carbon yoke on it with a foam pad. And then just like our regular carbon Kevlar trim finish or with our aluminum trim, all the boats we build, you, if you lightly look here, guys, you can see there's a ribbing structure. Anywhere we put a seat in, we make the ribs wider than the seat itself and we urethane in these side pods. Structurally, it has incredible rigidity to it. There's no sway in the boat over time. It looks terrific, no rivets on the outside. So Matt, you've done it again. <laughs> so new this year, you're cooking our carbon seats and our carbon yolks with epoxy. So let's tell the folks all about it. Yeah, so uh, this year we really wanted to upgrade a lot of our structural components to epoxy because we knew we were going to get a lot less weight and a lot more strength. So what we're doing is uh, 
Just like the canoes, we're using a very special process to post cure them after the resin has initially set. So once the resin is set in our carbon parts, we run a ramp soak cycle in our oven at the factory. And like we were talking about before, we wanna make sure that the resin is completely stabilized and we're maximizing the strength that we're getting from this aerospace grade epoxy in our parts. As a result, we've gotten some really cool, really light, yet really strong parts. So uh, on- Can I interject? Yeah. One, one thing you pointed out to me that we didn't talk about with the epoxy finish in the boats, we you cure these at a real high elevated temperature and like in the u.s it hit 118 degrees last year australia we have a dealer they sell a lot of our boats and they have six epoxy boats in order right now yep it's this the epoxy is so good with our changing climate with the elevated temperatures yeah, so like Bill said, uh, we are cycling them very hot. So know that uh, any epoxy canoe that you get from us is seen temperatures way hotter than the sun is ever going to make it. So you don't have to worry about de deformations or stability in high temperatures or cold temperatures for that matter. So let's show the folks, Matt, the difference in weight be between our traditional cherry parts and then our new lightweight epoxy belt carbon yolks and seeds. Sounds good. So this is going to be a, a good reason on why you want a carbon tech package in your next boat because uh, all this weight we show you is going to be on your back. So here is our traditional cherry yolk. So it's around two pounds. Now wood can vary a little bit depending on the moisture content. But the good thing about carbon fiber is uh, there is no moisture content, so we should be able to keep the uh, weights really consistent around one pound. So 50% weight savings from the cherry component is pretty amazing. So yeah. man, let me ask you this too. These parts are hollow. You've developed a super cool way to infuse these. I've, it blows me away. Like I've, I'm a cyclist also and know there's a lot of yep. carbon bike frames built out of one piece carbon. Yep. This is a super cool part. Uh, the yoke's one of our proudest parts actually. Uh, years ago when me and Terry started developing the yoke, we actually had a composite uh, consultant that told us it would cost us a half a million dollars and a lot of labor in order to bring this into production. Well, uh, me and Terry went to Bill for a lot less than a half a million dollars. And as a result, within a year, we were able to develop the first carbon fiber yolks on the planet. Yes, <laughs> and boy, we're happy with that. <laughs> All the paddlers out there carrying lighter weight boats have you to thank for that, Matt. It's just an absolute beautiful part. This could win an award at a <laughs> composite show, what you've done. So let's show the seat now, the weight difference on the seat. All right, so here we go. We've got uh, our cherry seat here. We've got 2.1 pounds and it's carbon counterpart. Let me grab that you got for that, a Bill? So let me show the folks while you're getting the other one set up. Guys, our seats are so cool. We angle the front bar forward where you're kneeling so it doesn't dig into the back of your thighs at all. And let's show them here, Joe, there's 11 to 12 plies of cherry and maple on every seat. So it's bent to shape and formed to shape. And then the back bar, we angle back to give you more room for our ample posteriors as we're growing in age. And then we talked about the Versa seat. It has this angle, both when you're facing forward on it, and then if someone's soloing and sitting in the bow and facing the back, it's got the reverse curve going the other way. Ooh la la. So you've duplicated this exact shape yep. with the carbon seat. So this is what, 2.1 pounds about? Yep, 2.1 pounds and its carbon counterpart comes in at only 1.5 pounds. And uh, what's really cool is Bill was showing the thickness of the wooden seat. If you actually look, the thickness of the carbon seat is actually quite a bit less. We're able to get the same amount of strength while actually having less thickness, which is uh, pretty incredible. So we'll, uh, we'll show you how strong it is here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, let's do that testing now. Let's show them. Sounds good. Okay, so like we were just saying, we're gonna see uh, how much weight this seat can take. So before we do this quick test, so we're actually just gonna test this one bar here. Keep in mind when someone's sitting on the seat with the webbing on here, loads transferred to all these different points. Okay, and uh, you know, 
When we develop a laminate, we develop a laminate to take very specific weights. We could make a seat that could hold 2,000 pounds, but as a result, that seat is gonna be increased in weight. So we try and get a fine balance of durability, strength, and weight in one. So this particular laminate here is scheduled to take around 275 pounds. If, uh, if you weigh a little bit more than that and you want a, a boat from us, just let us know. We can redevelop the laminate, we can make it stronger, we can make sure that it supports what you need. And we can build the side pod stronger, we can do the rib a little thick. We built boats, we had one paddler that weighed 400 pounds and we built a boat that the, he's just tickled pink with. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So if you give us the details, we can make the boat custom tailored to your needs, yeah. So this is a seat map. This is the yep. raw form. You've made the seat to yep. pull it out of the mold. This is what it looks like before you trim all the edges. Yep, so we're gonna test this bad boy out because uh, we got those really nice carbon seats there and we, we don't want to destroy a perfectly good carbon seat. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it into this one before we put a lot of work into it. All right, let's see what we can get out of this guy. Okay, so we got 100, 200. So we hit 318 pounds there. And if we take it out and look, we can see there's no cracking or anything like that. It looks like a great seed still. <laughs> so 300 pounds on that front rail. We know that once it's webbed and your load is spread out to the different parts, that this should more than support 90% of the public. Yeah. And it's epoxy, we talked about, you've cured it at room temperature, then you put it in the oven for a specific period of time. Yep, this year we decided, you know, the extra strength and rigidity that we get from this aerospace epoxy, all of our structural components are gonna be made from epoxy to make sure they have the best weight and strength ratio possible. So yeah. now how much weight will someone save? Let, let's say a solo canoe, a pack boat, a tandem canoe. Yeah, so we're thinking in a solo or pack boat, getting a carbon tech package, you're gonna save a pound, and in a tandem boat, you're gonna save around two. Two and yeah. maybe three. Yeah, maybe, maybe even three, depending out. on how many components you have in your boat. Yeah. And that Prospector 15 under 30 pounds, and we've had it on the floor, we've been stressing the heck out of it. It is a structurally sound boat. Yeah, uh, when we saw this boat come off the scale at 29.0, we're all really excited. It's not very often you see a 15 foot tandem canoe that's sub 30 pounds. And yeah. has a lot of structural integrity. And folks, this is one thing I really wanna stress, because there are other people making lightweight boats in the industry. And Joe, let's just go over here for a sec. What I've, what's really important to me, I grew up in a rental operation, is structural integrity. That when you paddle the boat, you don't feel the gunnels twisting or pulling different direction. The boat is a really structurally sound boat and it's gonna give you years of good use. So what's, why do people pay a little bit more to get a Swift? It's to get a boat that's lightweight and that is incredibly structurally sound and Matt and the great team of people at the factory have done an incredible job engineering and building these parts. So thank you for all paddlers for what you've done for that. Let's show them some other things. There are a lot of wood lovers out there and I'm one of them. I went to a camp and grew up in cedar canvas canoes and I love the look and feel of wood. This is an option we offer on our lightweight carbon Kevlar trim canoes and pack boats. It's to have cherry outers on it and composite decks. And then we do all the interior pieces in cherry as well. This is a beautiful Prospector 15 in Kevlar Fusion. It's got the moss green finish on it. Ooh la la. If you really want a boat that has some nice wood appointments on it, the boat with a solid gel coat, cherry outer finish is just beautiful. And Joe, let's show the folks this one because this is an absolutely beautiful boat. This is a Kiwaden 16 Combi in our Expedition Kevlar laminate with the Basalta Negra on the outside. It's got the Basalta Negra on the inside. It's got a couple layers of cloth in between, including a layer of Kevlar. And this has the three seats in it. Luke from Canoe Shops in the UK hit me with a question the other week. He said, I've got a customer that wants to get a Kiwaden 16 Combi and they want to know if 
all the seats can be detachable. And Luke, absolutely. So the center seat is an option you can order detachable. And the way these seats come in and out, folks, is real easy. It's on a pin and magnet system. You can take it out and put it in very quickly. And you can also take the, order it with the bow seat and the stern seat being detachable also. It's called the quick change seating system. This gives you the ultimate in versatility that you've got a great solo boat. You can take the seats out of the end to make it even lighter if you're doing some carrying or portaging. You can also set it up for two people to take out the solo seat on your trip. And you can put the detachable yoke in very easily. Or you can use it as a three-person boat. So these combis are an absolutely great way to go. Our carbon Kevlar trim with the cherry outers and the cherry interior pieces, these are a work of beauty. So Matt, we've got another question here. So the folks in Australia again, and then um, Jim at Canoe Shops UK had the same question. If some people want to put supplemental airbags in the boat, some of these guys paddle out in the ocean sometimes and they mm -hmm. want to be really careful. Yeah. Can they drill holes through our laminates and lash airbags in them to keep them in tight? Yeah, they, they certainly can. There should be no worries about that. So even in this particular laminate, there's actually a layer of Kevlar sandwiched in between these two layers of basalt. So drilling through that and having the Kevlar inside the hole is going to prevent it from abrading through and, and broadening and widening over time there should be no concerns putting airbags in one of our boats. We, and yeah. we've had customers do it with all the laminates that we do. So yep, we yep. see them coming into, into the repair department quite frequently. Yeah. <laughs> that tends to be a hardcore whitewater pattern. It's <laughs> yeah. using their boat pretty hard. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's show yeah. now another piece of beauty. For folks that love wood and the weight isn't as important, we do an absolutely beautiful cherry trim finish we put scuppers right in the deck you can see how the ends are all joined together it's really smooth a beautiful gunnel system this particular customer Derek Weinberger lives in Alberta and he wanted a really versatile canoe that he could take solo paddling or tandem paddling and this is actually a Prospector 15 combi, and it's got that detachable seat system that we talked about. So he can make it a little bit lighter if he's got, wants to go out with two people again. So the boats with this beautiful cherry trim finish, guys, they take three to four times more time to go through our factory because there's a lot of work involved in them. They do cost a little bit more, but if you love wood, this is an absolutely stupendous finish. Oh, Matt, this is one of my favorite finishes, and I have a boat in this. So these are our standard Techstream finishes right now. So this particular one is Xylon with carbon in it. This particular one is carbon with a Negra in it. And then we have an all black carbon finish with this. And Matt, this cloth is amazing. So epoxy resin? Yeah, well, uh, we're gonna utilize epoxy resin in these laminates because you're gonna get the true properties of the tech stream utilizing the epoxy resin system. Yeah. yeah, you get this strong and it flows so nice. Exactly, yep. Now we've talked about this between us in the past. Now the tech stream has what's referred to as a spread toe fabric. It's yeah. really wide, wide and there's very little separation between the actual cloth that's being woven together. Why is that? So the, the perk to having a spread toe fabric like Textream is, so if you look at a traditional weave of carbon fiber, right here where each square intersects with another square, that dot there is actually called a crimp. So when you've got like plain weave carbon, there would literally be tens of thousands of crimps in your laminate. And every single one of those crimps holds a little bit of resin. So you can imagine tens of thousands of little dots of resin, 
tend to increase weight and increase brittleness. So when you have a spread toe fabric like this, by having the carbon fiber lay completely flat, we're getting less crimps, which is increasing strength and reducing weight. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now the Carbon Negra Tech Stream is, we've sold so many of these and we're gonna show one. The Xylon one is what you built on my boat. And the Xylon material itself is so strong. Why don't you tell the yep. folks a little bit about the Xylon? So Xylon is a very unique material. It's actually three times stronger than Kevlar, which is absolutely amazing, but it is a little susceptible to UV degradation. So that's why utilizing the Xylon texturing with our UV shield, I think we have a, a home run and it's gonna give you better abrasion resistance than the, the Carbon or the Enegra. Yes, and, yeah. and Susan told me when she cut this layer cloth on my boat, she had to go and resharpen her scissors twice. Yep. And she said that typically she gets about 10 boats of cutting before she has to resharpen them. Yeah, so it really showed in uh, limiting this boat. You know, uh, a lot of these other materials we can cut with uh, regular scissors. Kevlar's and Xylon's need special serrated scissors to even be able to cut the material in its dry state. Yeah. So the Xylon just doesn't look super cool. It's super strong as well. Yeah, it, it looks good. It performs well. It's an awesome material. Yeah. Now, some people just love the all black texturing and a canoe made out of this, folks, just looks stupendous. Absolutely beautiful. Now, Matt, all of these have the standard champagne UV shield finish on the bottom. Yep. So uh, Textream is a extremely hard material to lay up in the mold, especially some of the shapes that we have. So putting a, a champagne bottom is just gonna give you the best aesthetic look with the Textream. Yeah. Now, I know that the Mars Rover took, there's a helicopter up there. In the actual, the rotors, the blades on the helicopter on Mars are made out of Textream fabric. It's just, it's unbelievable how strong this is. It's an amazing aerospace material. It's also utilized in F1 a lot as well. A lot of the new F1 cars have components made out of Techstream now as well. <laughs> yeah. Now Matt, Techstream has partnered with another company now called Hypetex. Yep. And this is some really cool looking cloth. And the red right now, folks, we've got a full roll of it, and this is going to be one of the standard finishes we have this year. It's called Rosso. Then we also have this blue right now. We got a sample piece of it that it's called Propes. We can build one boat on this 13 feet or lower. So a Prospector 13, a Flash Fire, Pac 12.6, Cruiser 12.8. If you're out there and you love this and you want one of those boats, give us a call. And then this particular material, we've got, uh, it's called Malabar. And this we can do up to a 17 foot yeah. boat. We got another sample run from, from Techstream on it. But the red, the Rosso is, is we've got a full roll of it. Mm -hmm. So Matt, tell the folks what Hypetex is all about and why do these have such a cool look to them? Yep. Yeah. So, uh... Hypetex is a nanopigment that's actually added to the material at the point of production. And a big reason why Techstream actually developed these colors was, uh, I spoke about F1 earlier, they actually developed it for F1 so that they didn't have to paint some of the components. By having color in the material, they can give color to the part without having to post finish it, and it's reducing weights for them as well, while still giving them some aesthetic beauty. Yeah. So they can have the beautiful, clear UV shield, so to speak, finish on the outside, aerospace quality finish. This cloth behind it, and they can, whatever team it is, can have this incredible color. Exactly. Traditionally, in a lot of automotive, you don't even realize a lot of cars are made out of car. You don't see it because they're painted, but now they can do clear finishes and save weight just like we do, right? So this is actually starts as black carbon yep and hypetex actually colors with a nano pigment yep yeah right at the process so when the actual like spread toes made it would actually be pigmented before it's even woven yeah. that's so yeah cool. it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> folks let's show you a super cool boat made out of it so folks this is a rosso tech stream kevlar fusion canoe 
that we'd made for Kevin Duffy. He ordered it through Saratoga Outdoors. He wanted a dream canoe. He, uh, he inherited some money and it was his dream to put a amount of it in an absolutely beautiful canoe that would take him through life. So it's got the black carbon internal skid plates. It's got the beautiful Rosso tech stream. And Joe, why don't you just scan right down it. And Kevin ordered this particular boat as a combi. So he's got the solo detachable seat in it. He's got the adjustable bow sliding seat in the front. He's got the carbon foot bar in the back. Kevin, you are getting an absolutely gorgeous canoe. Rosso Tech Stream, and it also has the epoxy finish. Cheers to Kevin and this beautiful new boat. Folks, here is a beautiful Cruiser 14.8 built with a carbon and negra tech stream and it's got the internal black skid plates on the end. Look at this cloth. It's absolutely gorgeous. Structurally, it's got a really strong finish. You can really use this boat. And Joe, I'm gonna roll this boat over a little more. So we have a good friend, Ted Scott from Maryland. And he got a Kiwaden 15 last year in Carbon and Negra Tech Stream. And he got the Glacier Blue Kayak finish on the bottom. And now, we also last year, we built a Cruiser 14.8 with the Sunburst finish on the bottom. For this year, folks, we will not be able to do this with the epoxy. So if someone wants an epoxy, Tech Stream boat, they're all going to come standard with the champagne UV shield finish. But all of our other laminates, we can do this beautiful two-tone kayak finish on the bottom with our standard epoxy vinyl ester resin system. So Carbon and Evergrade Tech Stream, wow, this baby is gorgeous. Thank you, Ted. Okay, folks, I brought one of my canoes in today. This is a Cruiser 16.8. And when Matt showed me the Zylon Tech Stream last year, I just said, Matt, I've got to have one of these. And the Cruiser 16.8 is my favorite solo canoe. And the way I had it built, I had it built in Kevlar Fusion. I think that the Aramid cloth on the inside really looks good with the Zylon tech stream on the outside. I had a customer just send me an email saying that he thinks that this finish looks a little bit like a Adirondack pack basket. I love it because it's got a bit of an earth tone hue to it and it's just an absolutely beautiful boat to paddle. I've got it set up. I've got a real nice sassafras yoke, very lightweight. I like using a tump line so I put some of the weight on my head as well as my shoulders when I carry it. I find I can carry a pack in the boat very easily that way. These cruisers have the adjustable sliding seat where the foot brace slides with the seat itself. This is a beautiful, beautiful solo boat. And Joe, let's show the folks at the bottom here. So I've used this for a year now, folks. So this boat's been used. It's got some good character marks on it. And this will show you an option that we offer. And this has the Swift logo on the bottom. Now, we can do custom graphics for people. We've done a boat that has Nano written on the bottom. We've done a Shelby. We've done a Serenity. So if you have a particular word you want or a symbol on the bottom, as long as it doesn't have too much detail, Carmen, our marketing manager, is a graphic artist and she's able to work with graphics and work with people and we can put this on. And what's super cool about this, guys, is look at the cloth underneath here. This is the actual finish of the boat. Ooh la la. So this one was built before epoxy, so if someone ordered a Xylon Tech Stream this year and wanted a logo on the bottom, it would be with the epoxy. So the clear UV shield would be in all the lettering, the boat itself, and then the champagne UV shield with the two-tone finish on it. This is a truly beautiful boat. 
Ann at Racket River Outfitters, Matt, has a really good question for us. Are the TechStream carbon and Kevlar finishes as strong as our standard carbon fusion and Kevlar fusion laminates? Yep, so they should be as strong or stronger. So having the spread toe fabric in there is gonna spread the load out a little better. It should make it a little more rigid than just the classic plain weave. And, uh, and it looks amazing, so you're getting uh, you're getting both sides of the spectrum, right? So the upgrading cost isn't just for the look. It's you're structurally getting a stronger composite part. Yeah, especially, you know, you know, Bill, our laminates are so thin that, you know, every single layer that we put in there really adds some pretty substantial properties to how that boat performs. So, yeah. Nice. Techstream. What a great finish, folks. Okay, folks. UV shield epoxy resin wait till you see this matt this is absolutely killer so matt why don't you tell the folks just how you do this i'm going to go down the boat with uh, joe here and show folks what this looks like in in the light and why don't you talk a bit about this beautiful forge carbon boat yeah, so like Bill said, uh, we call this Forge Carbon. Um, it's an extremely cool look. Um, in this particular boat, we pigmented the sun shield just a little bit to give that uh, Forge Carbon a different look. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool material. It's, uh, it's random, so every boat is unique, but it's still adding strength to your boat. And uh, yeah, we're in love with this material. The look is absolutely incredible, and uh, it's a lot of fun to work with too. So Matt, you drew inspiration from this, from other products. Yep. So you'll notice uh, actually this year, a lot of the, the new driver lines for golf are made of Forge Carbon. Um, Lamborghini actually invented Forge Carbon in 2008. Um, since then, hundreds of manufacturers have been mimicking the Forge Carbon look and it, it just looks incredible. And uh, it just gives a new look to carbon fiber, right? And you've developed internal at Swift a super cool way to do these forge carbon boats. Yeah, we've uh, we've came up with a pretty cool process for uh, for putting these in the canoes. We don't want to we don't want to get into it too much as we don't want our competitors to know. But um, yeah, the team so, likes working show, with it. And... Show the folks the seat here. So yeah. if someone orders the carbon tech package with it, we're gonna upgrade you to. Uh, forge carbon seat components as well as forge carbon float tanks and uh, we love the look of these forge carbon components in the interior and we're doing the clear black on the inside folks it really blends in nicely with all the other parts rather than having it be the tint that we're putting on the outside so matt why don't we come over why don't you show the folks the different colors we can do this in sounds good so yeah we've got uh we've got the the purple forge carbon the blue forge carbon and the red forge carbon and we can also do just plain black any of these colors we could actually do fades just like you see here we could blend any of these four colors together in your forge carbon boat and folks, one thing we want to do is we want to do a forge carbon kayak. So we want to do the deck in one color and the hull in another color. We'd like you to put in the comment section of the video what you think would be the best look if you were going to get a forge carbon kayak and we're going to build one. And when you put the comment in, tell us where you're from. We like hearing from people and where they're from. Now, Matt, let's look at this. You were telling me that we can do these with either resin system, but the, the forge carbon really works well with epoxy. Yeah, it, in the testing that we've done, we find aesthetically and performance-wise, epoxy is working the best with the forge carbon and netting us the best results. Okay, so let me just show you, Joe, here's a little bigger sheet over here. Let's just show the folks this one. It may be a little clear, the clear back the purple, the red, and the blue. Ooh la la. Look how it moves as you move the light along it. It's very cool when you're outside on the water and the sun hits it, it's gonna be constantly changing. It's gonna look really cool out in the sun. 
So can I do something sacrilegious, Matt? I know that you've been, it's been killing you. I know you just want to hit this and scratch it and see what happens. <laughs> so folks, people sometimes make comments on our videos and things we post. They say, your boat's so beautiful. I wouldn't want to use it. I'd be afraid of, of hurting it, of destroying it. Well, here is our standard carbon fusion laminate with the forged carbon. This has the epoxy resin, Matt? Yep, and the UV shield. UV shield on the outside. So what do you think, Matt? Can we? Oh, she'll take it. She'll take it. Look at that, guys. This is a heavy-duty mallet, folks. Okay, now, Matt, what if someone scratches it? We're going to have to know. Someone takes it on a trip. Our swift boats are made to be used. They don't want to just sit in a showroom or a barn somewhere. They've gone on a good trip. They've taken their forged carbon boat down the Tim River, run over a lot of beaver dams, run over a lot of rocks. So again, it's not going to take the scratch out with a little finishing like that. But if we got buffing compounds, yep. you could bring the sheen right back again. And folks, look at it from a distance. A, it's a, got a good look to it. A good benefit is going to be to the random nature of the forged carbon. If you were to ever uh, experience substantial damage, we should be able to patch it up and put the forged carbon back on. And it should be a much less apparent repair than some of the like woven cloths. So Jim and Luke at Canoe Shops in the UK had, UK had a good question. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit right now. If you were going to get a forged carbon swift boat and be your only one, what finish would you get? Oh man, I, I'm a big fan of the classic carbon myself. I like the, the look of just the, the black carbon. It looks really good in the sunlight. And yeah, I'm just, uh, I've always been a fan of just black carbon. Yeah. But all of them are just oh. absolutely stupendous. They're all awesome. The, the purple's really growing on me. I'm not a big purple guy, but uh, this purple forged carbon looks uh, really cool. Okay, so here's a good question. We got this from both Jonas at Classic Outdoors in Saskatchewan and Dan at Paddle Portage in Australia. They want to know, is the forged carbon purely aesthetic or there practical or mechanical reasons why the laminate you'd want to choose this particular boat? Yeah, so it's a little bit of both. Aesthetically, it adds an incredible look to the canoe. Um, but uh, from a performance standpoint, uh, we're looking at the forged carbon. So in these particular laminates, we're doing the forged carbon and then we're still doing a three layer laminate. So we're thinking of the forged carbon as almost like an abrasive layer. So if you were to braid through your UV shield and start to hit the forged carbon, you could wear at it before you actually hit the plain weave carbon. And you know, we should be able to do some, some pretty sweet repairs on this and bring it back. Um, we're also going to offer a lightweight forged carbon option where we do the forged carbon and then we just do two layers. So there'll be an ultra light version and a little bit more of a durable wear resistant forged carbon. Yeah, nice. And when a customer's ordering a boat from a dealer or us, yep. please specify whether you want the lightweight or the standard build on that. Exactly, yeah. So here's another really good question. There's a crazy race down in Texas called the Texas Water Safari where they go it's crazy what they do in this race. So Jeff Larson is looking for a canoe to use in the race. And he knows he's going to use his boat hard and he knows it's going to need repair over time. Mm -hmm. And you answered it. Like, is it, it's repairable. Yeah, the, the, any of our boats are repairable, but uh, you know, depending on the cloth you have, some repairs might be more apparent than others. Um, the forged carbon something will have a really good chance at making a, a not visually apparent repair on your boat yeah nice matt i think this is absolutely one of the coolest things you've ever come up with so folks remember respond in the comment section what color forge kayak deck should we do and what color should we put on the hull and tell us where you're from and matt there's still more to come but this <laughs> is absolutely killer so far <laughs> cheers cheers I don't know about you folks at home, but I'm starting to get overwhelmed by all this. I want one of all of these boats. 
And let's talk about this now, Matt. This is what Matt refers to as a pearlescent finish, and it's actually a metal flake finish. And this particular dragonfly we built for Joe Geronimo in New York, and we ended up building a slightly different one for him. Matt, what I love about these when you build them is everyone looks a little unique. And what, tell the folks how you do these. Yeah, so a lot of these uh, metal flake and specialty finishes, uh, we like to do a quick little test panel. So we've got a big sheet of glass where we like to do tests on. So we'll do a quick test spray. And then from that, we can usually tell, like, do we need to add more color? Should we put more flake in? Um, every time we make one of these unique boats, everyone in the factory has their opinion. Some people like some things, some people don't like some things. We all try to come together and come up with what we think is going to look best so we can make the best possible boat on the next one. So but, this isn't just one spray and you're done. You spray the UV shield and then you've got a unique process where you layer different things in. Yeah, so depending on the finish, like for this particular one, usually on metal flake boats, we like to make it so that there's actually a superficial layer of clear over this whole boat. So we put a really thin layer of UV shield on the mold and then we start to lay the metal flakes in the colors. The benefit to that is going to add a tiny little bit of weight, but it's also going to significantly increase your repairability. So having that layer clear, if you have light scratching and stuff like that in five years, you could bring it to the factory. We could give it a quick sand and buff and we could bring it right back to its original luster. Whereas if, uh, if the color were right on the surface, it'd be a lot more difficult for us to repair. Yeah. Nice. So Matt, let's show the folks now another one. The boat, why don't you come around the corner here? So this is a Kiwaden 14 that Julie Sheehan has ordered with Connie at Rutabaga Paddle Sports in Wisconsin. And Julie lives in Madison and she wants a boat to cruise around the local rivers and lakes and streams around Madison. And this one's a little unique, Matt. So why don't you tell the folks, this one looks different than the other one. Yeah, so uh, last year we did a purple pearl boat similar to this one, but uh, this year we were utilizing the UV shield, so things changed a little bit. You know, when we did the purple pearl last year, we were all able to use a purple gel coat when we made it, whereas this year, it's hard to tell, but this purple that you're seeing is actually translucent. So just like the dragonfly, we put clear, and then we have the purple pearl, and then we have a translucent purple very similar to the purple that's on the forge carbon layered behind it and that's what's giving us this effect on this boat now connie at rutabaga has a question she loves the kiwaden 14 and she's they've sold a few of them over the years yep. and she wants to know can she still get one yep our kiwaden 14 mold is still in excellent shape so uh, any customers that still would love to have a Kuwaitan 14 uh, should have no problem talking to one of our sales staff and uh, getting their order put in at the factory. So yeah. we are, have a new boat, Prospector 13, that we're going to show you shortly that we brought in the line and we've taken the Kuwaitan 14 out this year. But this is the beautiful boat for the right customer. Now, Matt, do we want to do pearlescence in different colors or the orange and the purple, the ones that you like doing the most? Um, in the future, we could do more. These are ones we've experimented a lot with and, uh, and we know the results we're gonna get and it works really well with our UV shield. So for, for now, these are our best ones, so. You know what I love about them, Matt, is I did a trip with Joe Geronimo last year and that like when the lightest flat of cloud comes over, the boat looks orange. Yep. And then the sun comes out and boom, it just lights right up. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Like this, this pearl boat is going to look absolutely crazy when the sunshine hits it. The pearl picks up amazingly in these boats. I love the metal flake boats because every time you see them in different lighting, they do. They look like totally different boats. It's really cool. Julia's going to love her boat. <laughs> Well, cheers to the metal flake finishes. Here's another beautiful boat that we're offering this year. We did one of our Canada package canoes with our UV shield on the outside in the Kevlar Fusion laminate. Folks, this boat weighs 34.4 pounds. It's four pounds under our advertised weight and it is super structurally sound. 
So when we do the Canada Package Boats, we put these beautiful cascading decals on the end of it. We do a lot of custom work with details, with decals. So if you want to put a particular name on the boat, we've had customers do some things like uh, Jeff Larson wants the Texas, the shape of Texas at the end of the pinstripe. We've done leafs at the end of the pinstripe. If you have something custom in mind, let us know and we can work out a price for you. So Joe, let's show the folks the bottom of this boat. So we've actually built the Canada flag right into the gel coat. Absolutely beautiful. And we have done lots of these folks over the years. We've also done the Florida state flag and we've done a couple other unique things. So if you have something in mind, let us know. But holy smokes, folks, 34.4 pounds, Prospector 16, Kevlar Fusion with the Canada package. Every Canadian needs one of these. Folks, here is a beautiful Prospector 14, emerald green finish, Kevlar Fusion. It's got the UV shield on the outside. This boat came in at 26 pounds. Great, great weight. And Matt, let's turn this over. So Matt and his team did something special with this. And Matt, do you want to just talk a little bit about how you guys just do this and that what might be available to the customer with this? Yeah, so this one's basically the opposite of the Canada flag. We can do inset graphics uh, in just the clear coat as well. So. Like Bill was saying earlier, you don't want anything too complex as it can be quite difficult to uh, mask these off. But in this process, we basically, uh, we stick a decal in the shape of this portager into the mold. We mask off the rest of the mold. We spray our logo, we let that tack up, and then we spray all the clear in. And then we get these beautiful inset logos that uh, aren't gonna wear off like a sticker. Yeah, that's one of the keys. Like I've yep. seen other, folks do it with stickers. This is built right into the boat. We have to thank the good folks at Paddle Portage in Australia for giving the inspiration for us to do this. Their logo is actually similar to this. So thanks to the Aussies to coming up for the idea for this. And we call this the Portature logo and it's one of the standard logos that you can get from us. Here's one of the coolest looks that you do, and this is the Raven finish, and oh my goodness. And Joe, let's show the folks what this finish looks like in the sunlight. So this boat is for George Burgess from New Jersey, and he is actually coming up here, and we're going to be doing another video with George, actually paddling the boat, and he's going to tell us why he bought this beautiful boat. But this is a Cruiser 16.8 in the canoe version. It's got the beautiful sliding seat to it. It's got the detachable carbon yoke. And Joe, why don't we come back to Matt here? Matt, this is freaking killer. Talk to us about this. Why don't you shine the light on it and go down it and just tell us what you do with this. Yeah, so the, the Raven Fade actually, uh, it's been around for a while. This is actually one of my first ideas when I was spray technician at the factory years ago. And uh, we experimented with it a few times and then uh, we made you a boat and Bill loved it. And then uh, ever since then, we've been making quite a few of these every year. Yeah. So you do, there's, this isn't just like one spray of blue, like you do. Yeah, so typically there's at least three blues here. So just like all the other specialty boats, we put some clear on first, and then we have a semi-solid superior blue that fades into a less translucent, more translucent, and then more translucent until we taper out into the beautiful natural carbon fiber. And it's black carbon all through the back end, yeah. and it's just beautiful. This boat is an absolute hottie. I, I, you're absolutely right, Matt. I love this, and I want one. So cheers to the Raven finish, and we're going to have fun with George in an upcoming video. Folks, this is one of Matt's absolutely most beautiful works of art. This is our Galaxy finish. And Joe, let's show the folks what this boat looks like out in the sunlight. 
This boat has been ordered by Susie Bartell, and she ordered it from Canoe Shops UK. And Matt has done about a dozen of these or so. We call it the Galaxy Finish. Absolutely stunningly beautiful. Everybody wants to get a piece of art like this. And my Gail Adrian said to me the other night, she said, you know, she saw the video of this and she said, it's really cool that we've been able to create an environment at Swift, which Matt, who has unbelievable technical abilities, can really also show his artistic talents. Um, and Matt, you're not just an incredible technician and engineer of products, but this particular boat, let's flip it over. This is an absolute work of art. So, yeah, these are, uh, these are actually a, a lot of fun to do. So Matt, why don't you tell the folks your inspiration, because this is a work of art. Tell the folks about it. So yeah, as we've said before, so uh, we've done almost a dozen of these now and everyone's unique to itself. So uh, usually the night before that uh, a galaxy is uh, scheduled to be produced, I'll just go online and I just, I look at a lot of pictures of space and I more pay attention to the, the colors that are used. And then the next day when I get to work, I, I see what colors and pigments I have to work with. And then, uh, yeah, usually I come up with eight to nine colors plus two metal flakes to go in here. And then uh, from there, once I get in the booth, I have a rough plan, but uh, my hands do a lot of the talking in the booth and I kind of just go with what's looking good and what's flowing with the particular model that we're doing. And uh, yeah, we, uh, and we come up with some really cool stuff. So you've got really good energy on the days that you're, you're doing these. So eight or nine colors, like you do separate sprays. Yeah, so uh, in this particular case, if I were to do them all in separate sprays, it would take me a very, very, very long time to spray this. So I've actually come up with a system where uh, the first three colors go on and then the other seven go on after and they go wet on wet on wet so that I get really good blends and transitions and everything adheres really well to the boat. So this has the incredible UV shield on the outside of it. And this yep. is a carbon fusion laminate. You like the black cloth yep. behind it. Yep. So it's the carbon fusion laminate, galaxy pattern. This one came in really light. Like we were blown away how light this was. Yeah, so this was our first UV shield one and uh, it, it was great. It looks stunning and uh, even though we used all the different colors, the colors are thinner, like we said before. If you actually really, really look, a lot of these colors are just translucent colors. They're not solid colors like gel coat. It helps us keep down on the weight and we get some really unique blends. This boat looks different in every light that you put it in. It's really cool. Joe, let's show the side of it here. Look at that. Susie. Bartel, you are going to be one happy gal when you get this boat. This is absolutely gorgeous. And Matt, what I think we should do now is let's get the panel of this out. And I'm going to do something that might surprise some folks, but let's just show the folks how strong this is. Because Carmen, our marketing manager, came up with the idea. We need to show people that these boats are meant to be used. This isn't something that you want Matt to make for you and you just hang from your wall. Although it certainly will be nice that way. Robin Rutkowitz, one of uh, our sales scale in the US, has a Carbon Negra Textring Cruiser 14A. And she's found a way to mount her cruiser in her living room. Clara Fritz has a Carbon Kiwaden 16. She does the same down near Washington, D.C. So Matt, this is the laminate right here. Yep. So you made up a sheet. And again, it's got the UV shield, carbon fusion. So it's really super durable. Now, I'm gonna feel bad doing this. Do you wanna do it? Yeah, I mean, I created it. I should be the one to destroy it. <laughs> so let's, let's just show Susie and other folks. We're not going to do it to your boat, Susie. Let, let's just show people first the mail test, Let's oh, just yeah. show yep. folks what this can take. So yeah, this should be uh, just as strong as all of our other laminates. 
So pretty good. And uh, now for some, some shooting stars in our galaxy. Look at that. So let's just stop for a second, yep. Matt. So one could go out on a outing and scratch the boat somehow yep. and literally think, hey, it's a shooting star on my pattern. Yep. And, and like I said, with all our specialty finishes, there is a layer of clear. So these scratches could be fixed in the future if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And what do you think? Should we, should we try this? Yeah, let's give her show. a little wipe and see let's what we get. Let's show Susie another. You've got some protectant three. You're not going to get the scratches out, but you can make it look pretty darn yeah, good again. Yeah, it's much reduced for sure. Now, Matt, if someone had a good buffer and good buffing compounds, could they almost make it look like new again? Yeah, they could bring it up pretty good. I mean, if it's a really deep scratch, you'd want to do a little wet sanding with the buffing, but light scratching and stuff like that, you could bring up pretty good with an aggressive compound. So, mm. Matt, thank you. No problem. Uh, this galaxy finish, <laughs> like holy smokes, folks. Mm. It might, I hope it looks good on camera. Mm. When you see one of these boats, especially out in the sun, wow, yeah. unbelievable. So cheers to Galaxy. Folks, let's show you a couple new boats that we have for 2024. We'll start out with this one. This is a David Yost Design Prospector 13. Two inches narrower than the Prospector 14, half an inch more shallow. This boat's an absolutely beauty in the water for the right size paddler. This particular one is the granite finish with the UV shield and carbon fusion laminate. It's got the sassafras interior. It's got the sassafras detachable yoke on it. When we do do the sassafras interior, folks, which takes a little weight out of the boat, we do do the cherry seats. So great looking boat, will save you a little bit weight. And Joe, let's show the folks this one right here. This is a Ruby in Kevlar Fusion. This baby only weighs 24 and a half pounds. Now, Peter Graham from the Niagara region is looking for a small solo canoe to take across Algonquin Park. He's 5'6", weighs 150 pounds, likes to take lightweight gear and food with him. This may be an absolutely ideal size boat for him. He's going to come up and test paddle them in the spring. Let me show you how light this boat is. 24 and a half pounds, folks. Holy camoly. But don't take my word for it. Let's get Jess to lift it up. Rich from Lakes and Trails Outfitters in the Adirondacks has asked if we're going to be doing the Prospector 13 in a pack version. And we're actually not making it as a pack this year because we have a bunch of 13 foot boats that are really nice. We've got a pack 12 6, got a cruiser 12 8. We've got a pack 13.8. Some folks, though, may order it with our popular multi-height pods. In the lower position, you can use the GCI sit-backer seat and get either the kayak foot braces or the carbon foot bar. And it, in essence, it'll be just like one of our pack boats. It'll be a really good option for you. Now, we've got another question from a dealer. And they're wondering what size paddler will choose the Prospector 13 versus the Prospector 14. So let's show you. So it was Dan from Paddle Portage in Australia that was wondering about the sizing of these two boats. So Diane is smaller in stature than me. I'm 6'4", about 240 pounds. The Prospector 14 fits me so nicely. I can move my legs to the side nicely. I can put one leg in the middle if I want. The seat height is at a height that I can easily put one leg under if I want to, or I can kneel with both legs. Diane is 5'1", about 120 pounds, and she fits the Prospector 13 so beautifully. So is it easy to swing your legs under too, Diane, when you want to? Yeah, absolutely. 
perfect size for me. So this will be a really good size boat, the Prospector 13, for someone that weighs 160 pounds or less for tripping, or even I've paddled this boat at 240 unloaded without any gear in it. I felt it was a little bit too nimble, but I think this particular boat is gonna be really popular. We're selling more Prospector 14s than all the rest of our solo boats combined. This is going to be a great companion boat to it. Yeah. Cheers to the Prospector 13. Another new boat we have for this year is a Flash Fire, which is another 13-foot solo canoe. Now, it's a really unique shape. It's got a lot of tumble home on it, and it's got a fair amount of rocker on the bottom. And it's actually the little sister to the Wildfire, which we put into production last year. The Wildfire's a 14-footer. They both have a fair amount of rocker. They're a really unique shape. They're symmetrical on the bottom, so they both have the same amount of rocker in each end, the same hull shape. But then above the waterline, the top shape, they're a little bit deeper in the bow, a little bit less in the stern, and they've got a little bit more flare in the bow of the boat. They're very good for shedding water. They're very comfortable for people running small class one, class two water. A lot of highly skilled paddlers like these that like to lean their boat way over to the side and play with them in the water. They can really be spun around quite nicely. So absolutely beautiful boats. Charlie Wilson spec these out originally with our designer David Yost and he was designed I believe in the late 90s and what we did is and Matt why don't you come in here so a lot of people want to know Matt are these the original boats so let's tell the folks how you put these into production yeah so these are the made out of the original molds. So uh, one day Bill showed up at the factory with a trailer full of molds and uh, they looked pretty old, uh, but uh, it was a lot of work, but we managed to refurbish them so that we could uh, start manufacturing these beautiful boats again. With our resin infusion process, we put a tremendous amount of pressure on the mold, so you really had to beef them up and put big flanges on them and so on. Yeah, we had to beef up flanges, beef up the laminate. Uh, we made custom welded carts for the molds to sit on to make production a little easier. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, but uh, we're glad to see everything's working out and these boats are turning out amazing. Charlie Wilson had a lot to do with these and continues to. These are Charlie's babies. Charlie wants to know if you'll build a nice tech stream, flash fire, wildfire for him. Charlie, we will build you a flash fire, wildfire in any material you want. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, well, why don't we set these down the ground? We're going to show you how they fit paddlers. Peter Graham from Niagara is also interested in the flash fire. He's asked us what the differences are between the two boats. So the flash fire has a bit more rocker on the bottom and Diane's about 5'1", Jess is about 5'2". You can see it fits their stature very nicely. Peter, you at 5'6", will probably fit in both these boats really nice. The flash fire is going to be more maneuverable, more playful. Prospector 13 is going to have a little bit more capacity. Gals, do you want to stretch your legs out? Like how comfortable are you also with your feet out in front of you? Nice. Yeah, beautiful. So folks, if you're looking for a small solo canoe this year, the Flash Fire and Prospector 13 should be at the top of your list to try out. So Matt, we've got another question here. Jason Olds from Montana. He's a big follower of David Yost Designs, and he wants to know if we're going to put the Starfire into production. So we do have the Starfire mold at Swift currently, and uh, when the time's right, we'll refurbish it, and we'll get it in production as well. Two new solo canoes to play with this year. Life is good. Cheers. Kayak lovers out there, you haven't been left out for this year. We've got a lot of exciting news for you. So, we're using UV shield on all our hulls this year. So, whether it be the clear or the champagne finish, your kayak hull will be made with that incredible UV shield material. 
This is a Saranac 14 LC. It's a new boat for us. It's got the graphite, the, the granite finish on the bottom that looks just super cool. This one's got a glacier blue deck on it. What we did is we took the boat, we made a bigger cockpit, more on that coming up. Here is a Saranac 14 LC. It's actually been made for one of our dealers, Collinsville in Connecticut. We're doing clear amber finish hulls on our Kevlar Fusion this year with a UV shield. This is a beautiful yellow deck. And check this baby out right here. The Saranac 14 now is standard with the overlapping seams. This is a carbon one with a black carbon hull on it. Firestorm deck. So for folks that are getting carbon kayaks, you can get it either with the black carbon, the granite carbon, or the champagne finish, all with UV shield. Beautiful Saranac 15 LC on the bottom. It's got that amber finish on it. Why don't we show it, Joe, a little bit? Absolutely beautiful finish. This is a nice sunburst one. This is the baby that fits me really nicely. So folks, come on down here. Let's show you some other super cool boats. We'll start up top, Kawasa 13-2. This again has the amber finish on the hull, and it's got the red gel on the top. And again, any of the colored gel coats, folks, we're not doing UV shield on. But where you need the toughness the most in a kayak, you're getting it. Now, Joe, here's a beautiful finish boat. So this is an Adirondack 12 LT with an amber deck, an amber hull. And let's show some of the footage of this particular boat out in the sunlight. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got a really good look to it. Now, the amber cloth we can do on the deck of all of our boats that are LT. For boats that have the hatches and more fittings on them, it's more difficult to do. It may be able to be done, but the amber is going to be a standard finish on the LT models, and it lightens the boat up nicely. And then how about this baby? This is an Adirondack 13.6 with our absolutely beautiful Basalt and Negra co-mangled deck and hull. And Joe, we've got great footage out in the sun on this boat, so let's show it. And take a look at this boat, folks. Absolutely beautiful. This particular finish is going to be very popular with people that want a really natural hue to the boat. Sportsmen, fishermen, people that just love an earth tone finish. And Joe, let's show the folks over here. This is another finish that we can offer on our LT decks. This is a granite deck with a granite hull. This is the absolute lightest weight we can build the kayak. With the UV shield, this baby's going to be approaching 20 pounds. Have lots of toughness, be super light, absolutely beautiful. This commingle cloth that's the Basalta Negra, we can build all of our kayaks in this particular material. So folks, how about we're going to show you the fitting now on our new Saranac 14 LC. Here are two beautiful kayaks. I'm in the popular Saranac 15 with the LC cockpit which means it's the large cockpit. It's got more room in it. We've designed it for people that have maybe had knee replacements, hip replacements, people that want to take a small dog or fish tackle with them. Madison, the brand new Saranac 14 LC, and you're about six feet tall. Yep. Now, when we did this boat, Matt, you built the boat, and then we had two or three people of average size sit in it. We literally drew the cockpit size out to fit an average size person. 
Yeah, so like Bill said, uh, a bunch of the, the staff members at the factory, uh, Brandon, our sales manager, came in. Uh, he's similar size to me. So we all got in it and we all kind of drew lines on the deck on where we felt the ring should go to. And uh, yeah, we feel like it all worked out really well. It's quite comfortable, easy to get in and out of. Looks good. Now, can you put your legs, brace them up on the sides easily too? Yep. This is, folks, a lot of people I find the more you bend your knees, the more comfortable it is over time. So a lot of people actually paddle like this, but then if it gets really rough out, it's nice to be able to put your legs right under the cockpit rim also. Yeah, this is, it's a super comfortable with this large cockpit, it's awesome. With all the padding we put around the cockpit, our padded seat with the adjustable lumbar support, yep. we're getting more and more folks buying these boats that just want a really comfortable kayak that they can paddle for in hours and still have a smile on their face. Yep. So Matt, why don't you tell the folks about this? Our seat back used to be made out of plastic you developed this really cool way to make this. You actually make it, it you post cured in the oven. So tell the yep. folks how you do it. So here's another part that uh, we manufacture in-house. So like Bill said, we used to have plastic in the back. We found over the years, sometimes plastic can get brittle and crack. So now we're manufacturing them out of Pura Negra. And uh, if you look, it's amazing. We can flex these, we can bend them. It doesn't break, and uh, we think these are gonna last a lot longer, and they're quite a bit lighter than their plastic counterpart. Nice, yeah. so 2024, folks. A great year to get a swift kayak, a swift pack boat, and maybe also a couple swift canoes. Cheers. Okay, folks, I hope you saw a lot, and you're gonna be able to make your mind up of which beautiful swift boat or boats that you really want. Jim from Canoe Shops in the UK had a question for me. And he said, Bill, if you could have only one boat for the rest of your paddling career, what boat would it be and what would be the specs on it? And if I only had to choose one, which would be very difficult for me to do, I'd get a Kiwaden 17 Combi in forged carbon, poxy resin, detachable center seat, detachable yoke, bow sliding seat for my gal, and a stern carbon foot bar. But let's do something fun here. I'm gonna go around to each rack here quickly and tell you the boat I want on the rack. I want this Adirondack 13.6 with this beautiful basalt and negra commingled deck and hull. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go to the Saranax here. I want a Saranac 15, and this sunburst finish with the amber bottom, ooh la la, that is what I really want. And I want to give a shout out to Wayne Garrett from Alabama. He's the first one to order the Saranac 14 LC, and we're doing it in the low volume finish for him. And this is a, one of the colors he's looking at with the amber hull and the yellow deck. Absolutely beautiful. So Joe, let's go to this right here. I love the look of this Cruiser 14.8, but for me with my size, I'm taking this Cruiser 15.8 with a beautiful lime green finish on the bottom. And this rack is gonna be easy, guys. This is my boat. This is my solo canoe. So I'm sticking with the Cruiser 16.8 in the Zylon Tech Stream. And look over here. George Burgess, I can't take your boat. So this is the Kiwaden 17. One of these, Forge Carbon, ooh, that's what I want. And then over here, a Combi. I love the look of the Basalta Negra Comingo cloth. Absolutely gorgeous. But I need one of the pieces of art that Matt has created, so I'm picking the Galaxy Prospector 15. Solo canoes, oh, the choices. The Wildfire fits me really nicely. I love the Expedition Kevlar with the Basalta Negra commingle on the outside and inside. I think it's absolutely one of the most beautiful builds we do. And look over here. Look at the choices on this rack. Well, Definitely going to take the Prospector 14 and the Forge Carbon with the epoxy resin. This is the finish. Now, Matt, what about you? 
If you could have one swift boat, what would it be and how would you make it? Uh, it's a loaded question, Bill. I'd need one of each, but if I had to choose, I'm partial. I have a Cruiser 14.8 in Expedition Carbon that I absolutely love, but I think I need a new one with UV shield and epoxy, and my wife would absolutely love one of these Prospector 14s in Forge Carbon with as a pack boat. And it's important to keep your gal happy. You got to keep your lady happy, Bill. So, and I <laughs> should say, good way to end this, folks. Adrian wants a Saranac 14, so we're going to let her pick her own color out. She's thinking <laughs> about it right now. So 2024, a great year to get one, two, three, four new Swift boats. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, folks.